Hey, this is Chris. Hope you're doing all right. Today, we're going to take an introductory look at Next.js, and specifically, we're going to learn how to use the get static props functionality. So with Next, uh, you are now able to build everything ahead of time and statically uh, serve all of your HTML and CSS. And you can even pull in data from an external API, build that, and then show it on your website. So pretty powerful uh, features and functionality here. So uh, today's video is going to be pretty basic. We are going to uh, we're going to pull from a uh, the ball don't lie API. I like using this one. It's simple. It's uh, there's not any sort of keys or anything that we need to use or any sort of extra privacy layers here. So what we're gonna do is create a new project. So I'm in a tutorials folder here. I'm gonna do npx create next app project name. We'll uh, we'll do uh, next. NBA. All right, now that that's finished up, we can change directories into next NBA. I'm going to open that, uh, open that up in VS Code. And then I'm going to run yarn dev. So where that's coming from is just in our package.json that next puts together for us. We've got some scripts and that just runs next dev for us, which starts the development environment so if we take a look at localhost 3000 refresh this and here's our next app so we're going to make some changes if we open up our pages index.js that's where all this information is coming from so we can even change like this to let's do next nba and save it and we hop back over now it's next nba here up at the top so we don't need really any of this stuff for now. So we can delete it. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new main with an H1, just gonna say NBA teams. Hop back over, there it is. There are some uh, styles that have already been applied out of the box, so this uh, uses and supports CSS modules. So you might see up here, import styles from here. Uh, so this div has the styles.container from home.module.css. I'm not gonna go super deep into CSS modules, but just know that that's where that's coming from is this container class here. And then there are some global styles uh, applied as well. So what we're focusing on is get static props. So basically what we want to do is use this endpoint to populate our application with all of the data on the different NBA teams that are accessible through, uh, through this API. So I'm going to grab this, uh, this endpoint and copy it. And then in my index.js, I'm going to do export async function get static props with uh, context as an argument and then open it up as a function. So if you've used next before, uh, or even if you haven't, you might encounter something that looks like this, where it's like home get initial props and then it continues on. Um, so something, you know, that might look like that. Get initial props. Uh, is kind of the older way to do it. Uh, since then, Next has split into server-side rendering and statically generated sites. And so with get static props, what we're doing is we are taking the, the static generated path uh, so that when we build our application, everything, all of our HTML and CSS gets wrapped up and it's uh, able to be served right away so there's no calling to the server to to render our stuff for us um, so in order to use get static props you need to make sure that you are writing it as a function and not as like a class extension similar to to this here so you wouldn't want to use that that sort of dot notation there 
So inside of get static props, we are going to make a call to our API. So we'll say const response is equal to await fetch because the, again, this is an asynchronous function and we're gonna uh, paste in that uh, endpoint. From there, we're gonna set our teams variable equal to await response.json. And then all we need to do to uh, make the props accessible is to return an object with props. Props also contains an object, and in this case, it's just gonna be teams. So now, how do we make this accessible to our home component? Home can take props, and then we can console log our props. If we save that and then flip back over, and we inspect and go to our console, got an object, okay, nothing useful yet, but let's refresh the page. And there we see teams. So teams, data, and then our array of all of the different teams. So we're gonna make this a little bit cleaner. If we flip back over, instead of uh, just grabbing props, we can destructure props since we know teams are coming in. And then let's just flip back over and console log that just to see what we're working with. So now if we refresh, now we've just got an object with a key of data. So data is set to this array. So something to keep in mind there. So what we can do is just let's make a simple list. So we can do an unordered list and we can grab our teams and remember it, we need to access data dot map and then for each team we can, I'm gonna implicitly return with a set of parentheses instead of doing curly brackets and we can make a list item. We'll do a key of team.name since all of the teams we know are gonna be, uh, team names are gonna be unique strings. And then we can just render team.name. And now if we flip back over it, there are all of our teams. So even if you don't love the NBA, you've now seen how to utilize an API endpoint inside of get static props. So you make your call, you do your JSON, whatever you want to do. And then whenever your uh, result is ready to be sent off, you just add it to this props object. You could make uh, a couple of different API calls here and just add them into your, uh, you know, other API data. Uh, obviously there is no other API data up here, but if you were to make another one, you could just add it on like that. And then you would just access it from the top, much in the same way that we've got going on here. So that's a very introductory uh, look at using get static props. Uh, the next video in this series will be utilizing get static paths, uh, which can be used in conjunction with get static props when you're uh, creating a statically generated site to create dynamic, uh, dynamic pages. So in that case, what we'll be doing is instead of just having this uh, list of just static team names, what we can do is uh, set it up so that each of these uh, individual teams will be links and then it'll it'll go to you know slash whatever the the team's ID is so thanks for sticking around in this video and until next time have a good one